All right, I don't know if you guys are ready to hear all this, but I'm gonna say it anyway, because it's such a change from even my last video. Um, but there's another version of events going around about the whole Preston Pierce situation and Gretchen Fleming encounter on the night of December 3rd, which was a Saturday night, and the morning of Sunday, December 4th. <clears throat> And this version of events is a completely different take from what we were saying before. And it's that Preston's being framed by our local police department. And there's so many rumors and theories going on out there 11 months into this case. And you might ask the question, why now? Why, why, why are we hearing this this late into the ball game? And there are some events that in some details that you guys just don't know and I don't know and you know we're trying to do the best we can we're trying to piece together information and honest to God hear me out on this because it's, it's gonna be a really wild stretch but honestly I think he is not only being framed but I don't even now I I really don't know that he even willingly sex trafficked Gretchen and we're talking about Preston Pierce here <clears throat> The story, the version of events that we are now hearing is that, remember the documentary on Investigation Discovery that was released in October last month, and the police said that the video surveillance showed that when John Jason Pape went to the bathroom, that Preston Pierce came from the casino room, grabbed Gretchen, and they went out willingly together. Well, that corroborates what the version of events that we're now hearing is that Gretchen actually was trying to get away from John Jason Pape. And she was asking for help while Preston Pierce didn't even know her and had no prior history of her before. And he just happened to be there because he was depressed and drinking and he had apparently lost one, his son I'm guessing by the name of Easton, I'm not sure on that, but he had apparently lost a son a couple months prior to that, and he had been drinking pretty much heavily every night. He was really depressed. He happened to be at my way. And she goes and gets him for help, saying, I've got to get away from this John Jason Pape guy. I've got to. He's He wants to have sex with me. He's trying to take me home, and bad things are going to happen. And as best we can understand it and you got to understand that we're piecing the details together just like you guys are and there's so many people working behind the scenes on this trying to figure all this out but that they left together well even the police on investigation discovery said that john jason pate followed quickly behind so what i'm thinking may have happened is preston really maybe was trying to help gretchen get away and she sought him for help because she didn't know what else to do. And she was asking Preston for help when Pape was playing pool at my way. And I think maybe Pape was catching on that Gretchen was trying to get away because the police, when they talked about it on Investigation Discovery, they said that the purse never made it into, into my way at all. And in our previous uh, research, we and i can't remember the name of the person now it's been a long time ago but several months back but there was somebody who was at my way and said that that john jason pape because he goes by jason pape but his real name is john and there's a reason that he's obscuring his name too that jason pape was taunting gretchen with her purse which had her cell phone in it and her credit and debit cards and she was screaming no, I'm not going home with you and I'm not having sex with you. And he was trying to hold that away from her as kind of collateral to get her to go with him, I guess. And remember when I said on the big show on YouTube, on our channel, Godspeed Ministries, when I, I titled it Lot's Cemetery, that um, not only was Pete taunting her, but he brought her to all the bars that he drove her to in a big black wrecker truck and Gretchen had asked him she says Jason why are you bringing me in this black wrecker truck and of course I don't know 
what the answer was, but we heard that through the grapevine. Well, if you look up his Facebook profile now, we're finding pictures right now, real time today, of his black wrecker truck clearly on there. And it's kind of scary because he had never driven that before, and that's why that that's what prompted Gretchen to ask Jason why he was driving that truck for. So what does it mean exactly? I don't know. It could be a cover. It could be something sinister. I don't know. But this version of events is that Preston may not have even realized that this is human trafficking going on, really. And with the whole police doing the investigation discovery, I kind of noticed some odd events. They were very, very quick to clear John Jason Pate right away. I mean, you get David Fleming saying, oh, no, he couldn't, he couldn't have possibly had anything to do with this because you could just tell how genuine he was in his voice and, and just right away, well, you, you got to remember, Pape, how we heard the first original take of events was Preston left with her, it was on video, they went in the car and they left and he came back in four minutes and he supposedly dropped her off at an intersection by the police station, which is just a couple blocks away from my way, which there's so many questions that everybody has right now. And this is a new take on things. And we're, we're really sincerely looking into this version of events because we have reason to believe that the police is, that the police department is framing Preston Pierce. And wouldn't it be the perfect fall guy with a man with his history with women and, and stalking them and, doing all the things that he has done. It's a perfect scapegoat. Now, with Pape, and, and you gotta put two and two together. I mean, look at how quickly they cleared him. It, it just doesn't make sense to me. It really doesn't make sense. He was cleared immediately, like the next day. And I'm like, how do you clear someone unless you're just saying you're clearing them, but using somebody as a decoy or something or keeping it in the background, I mean, we don't really know exactly how police investigations fully work. All we can do is go off hearsay and rumors, and a lot of people don't like that. They, they want cold, hard facts. Well, when it comes to human trafficking, every rumor, lead, and tip means something. It carries weight, and that's how you solve these cases is the community getting together and putting together what they know, collaborating. That's the whole purpose of group chats. But when you got Pape bringing Gretchen's purse back to the front row bar, which was supposedly the first bar they stopped at the next morning when they opened. And then there it sat for seven to eight days. And people have questions. Did he check on it during that time? I mean, he's her friend. He's not the family's friend. Did he check on it? I mean, did anybody do anything? All we know is that David came there seven to eight days later to retrieve it. And I'm assuming at that point, John Jason Pate probably reached out to David Fleming and said, hey, you know, it's been a long time. This is where her purse is at. But the family had questions that entire time. They didn't know where she was. The grandparents were hysterical. They didn't know, and they were the first ones, even before the father was starting to wonder. But the whole thing is just askew. And we're hearing some really, really wild reports right now that I'm gonna hold off on it. <laughs> because it's, it's, I'm not saying it's not true. I actually believe this could be true, but if so, it's, it's truly sinister what could be happening in this city and nobody's really safe, nobody. And you know, you look at all the missing women from years prior and have they been solved? No, they haven't. So people wanna put all this faith into the local law enforcement, but what results have we got? I don't see any. So, you know, I've been bashing them for quite a while. I know there are some good ones. I will make a quick side note here on a separate story. I know one of my friends, he recently was caught cheating on his wife and hoeing around and his wife actually caught pictures of a naked woman who happened to be somebody that I know and it made her heartbroken and this individual had put a gun up to his head. He wanted to end it all. And they had to call the cops and get a mental hygiene warrant out on him right away. And 
fortunately, he never did that. And thank God, because this individual otherwise is a great person. He just made a terrible judgment and error over the course of months, in my opinion. But And the young cop actually asked him if he could lay hands on him and pray over him. And I just thought that was... That was amazing to hear. That actually is one good story of our police department. And I know there are those people out there that advocate for the separation of church and state. I don't care. I'm not one of them. I'm a Christian. I thought that was a a sensational story, a fantastic turn of events for a young man, barely older than a kid, to take that responsibility and express his faith. Because when we are Christians, that's what we do. We don't let anybody tell us what we can't do. And to this day, it's, it's working, you know, the power of God is, is working in this individual's life and he hasn't pulled the trigger, but he did walk up to me one day and said, you know, it would be better if I just ended it all. And I said, no. And he said, yeah. And I said, no. And fortunately he hasn't done that, but that was just a side note story I wanted to share with everybody. And back to the original storyline here with Pape and Pierce. I truly, if you're going to ask my opinion right now, I know that I was the one. I don't want to say tarnishing Pierce's image because his history with women, it speaks for itself. And there really isn't any justification for that. But when you really think about this critically, could he have been framed? I mean, he sounds like a perfect scapegoat and a fall guy to me. And with all the research that we have poured into this from all the different angles, when you look at it with Hugh Squire and all the ciphers we've run and you get 47 and 74, and that may not mean a lot to you guys, but it means a heck of a lot to some of us. And I'm really starting to see some connections here. And it's really starting to make sense when you get the name Zimmerman coming up. It, and you see it in a Star Trek episode about where the, the names Zimmerman and Fleming come up in the same episode. It's It's at least a little bit ironic, you know, when these individuals are claiming that it has a connection to this Hugh Squire guy. So, like I said, I'm not delving too deep into that, but I do think there are bigger things in play with this. I think this is bigger than anybody knows. And here we are almost a year in, and this case thankfully has gotten a lot of notoriety, but I've also gotten reports of somebody who approached me saying that he knows a woman who has a a video of Gretchen Fleming in her underwear running away from crosses on fire. Now, I cannot confirm the veracity of that video. I have yet to receive it. But if it's true, if such a video actually exists, I will share it for you guys, as sensitive as it is. But that would tell you that this is demonic. And that there's something very, very evil. I mean, we we really, in this case, we are going up head and shoulders up against the devil. There's no doubt in my mind that this is straight from the devil. And, you know, all we can do is keep praying to Jesus. And a lot of you women in the group chats are praying every day. I see it. And I love seeing that because faith, when, when you have faith in Jesus, that's the only way sometimes that you can conquer the devil because we know that the devil's strong, but Jesus is stronger. We know that from everything in the Bible. He's always overcome the devil. So keep, keep praying, and we will keep looking up and researching facts and collaborating with the community and really trying to figure out what's going on here. Because if this is as evil as it seems, watch out, because nobody's safe. So I'm going to leave you with that and open up the discussion. And we're also going to simulcast this on our YouTube channel. And I'm also going to bring up the documentary and probably freeze frame it at certain points and interject my commentary and tell you why I think that the documentary is nothing but a bunch of hogwash. Until next time, guys, thanks for tuning in, and Godspeed as always.